Hello, History Detectives. I'm Henry. And I'm Kath. And we're very glad that you've joined us here today. Have you ever wondered what animals or objects or even buildings might say if they could speak? I bet the sheep would say, Bear, this grass is sweet, bear. But what about that tower up there? That's been there since 1746. I bet that could tell us a few stories. This is the Culloden Tower, which was built in 1746 on the site of a much older tower. The York family who built it used it as a place to get away from the busyness of their main house. It became ruined in the 20th century and used as a stables, but it was rescued by the Landmark Trust in 1981. So the tower was built in 1746. Hmm. Shall we do a number line in order to see how many years ago that was? I think that's a great idea, Henry. Do you want to do the adding up again? Sure thing. I've been getting good at it. Yeah. Right. First, to get from 1746 to 1750, we have to add four years. Then, jumping from 1750 to 1800, we have to add 50 years. Then we can jump all the way from the 1800 to 1900, that's 100 years. Next, add another 100 years to get from 1900 to 2000. Finally, to get from 2000 to 2021, we just simply add 21 years. Brilliant, Henry. Now, if you want to add all of those up, 4 plus 50 plus 100 plus 100 plus 21. Yep, keep going. That should give us a total of 275 years. Well done, Henry. That's terrific maths. Ooh, 275 years ago, the Culloden Tower was built. Before we go in, let's take a look at the outside. Now, there was a tower built here in the 1300s. Now, that older Peel Tower was square. Can you see the base of the Culloden Tower? Now that's square as well, and it's got different stones. The top is octagonal, eight-sided, and uses paler stones. So it might be that when they came to build the tower in 1740s, they used the stones from the older tower, or maybe even the foundations of it. Now it was built to protect the community from the Scots raiders, who would sneak down and attack farms and steal cattle, cows, sheep, and horses. And so our community in Richmond would use this to protect their animals. Rhoda is a storyteller from Richmond. She knows lots of tales about the town, including some spooky ones about the Culloden Tower. Guess what stories this building could tell? Let me tell you one. This building belongs to the Landmark Trust now and people come here for holidays to enjoy the town. Now we had a family staying here. It was mum, daughter and her husband. Now there are two sets of bedrooms, thank goodness, here. And mother was in the bottom bedroom to be near the bathroom. Great. They were enjoying a lovely time here, enjoying a glass of wine in the evening. But one morning, Mother said, Last night, I could smell hay in my bedroom when I got up for the loo. They said, Oh, Mother, don't worry, they've been cutting the grass outside. But Mother persisted the next morning. She said, I can smell that hay. It's really strong in my bedroom. They thought they'd given her one glass too many, maybe. But a couple of nights after that, Mother came up with a new story. She said, last night when I was up for the toilet, guess what? In the corner of my bedroom were two massive nostrils. Oh, don't give her any more wine, said the son-in-law. It passed and they enjoyed Richmond very much and bought a book about it to take home. Mother was reading the book on the way home in the car, looking at the photographs and things. Well, look at this, she said. And there in print was the fact that many years ago, 
the Culloden Tower, the base rooms, which was where Mother was staying, had been used as a stable to stable the local horses. Hence, the lovely smell of hay and the massive nostrils. And here we are in the very room. I wonder which corner Mother saw the nostril. Ah, hello strangers and welcome to my tower. I am John York, Member of Parliament from the town of Richmond. Ah, of course, I owned half the houses in town and as we all know only people with houses could vote. Uh, so I could elect anyone I wanted, namely me. I'm from the Whig party of course. We weren't called that because of where we wore wigs, although I am wearing a wig now, clearly. <laughs> no toys in Richmond. Over my dead body. Well, not to offend you, old chap, but you are dead. Hi, I'm John York. Nephew of this John York. It was my great-grandfather that built York House down by the river. It's a big fancy house with lots of servants, lots of guests, plenty of room to stay, at weeks at time as well. Bah, too many people. That is why I built this tower in 1746, so my wife and I could get away from the main house, uh, have time to ourselves. <laughs> my tower is a fine addition to the gardens, of course, and we would walk here from the main house and host exquisite banquets. I do love a good dinner. You see, we Georgians did love to walk, uh, not else much to do, so we would promenade along the river and the forest paths uh, and see our delightful gardens. Uh, look, you can see the last remaining part of them just behind that wall over there. The current owners, of course, sometimes open them for charity and such, and you can go and look in. I usually go and inspect them. I don't have to pay, though, because I'm a ghost, <laughs> obviously. Uh, so I just float on through the wall. You know, I improved this place, these grounds, by adding grottos and caves down by the riverbeds and a menagerie, although I think today you guys call that a private zoo. It was for my dear wife, Elizabeth. She was from Jamaica. So I got her a few monkeys and parrots to amuse her. That was after you were dead, old boy, 1769. Although, after I died in 1813, York House was sold off and knocked down, and the menagerie became a house to which this tower was attached to. Jokes on them. It was built to contain animals. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're ghosts, and the tower is looking magnificent. So we can enjoy it forever. I think that calls for celebration. Absolutely, Uncle. Uh, after you? No, after you. Oh, after you. After you. Oh, okay. Uh. The Landmark Trust finds buildings which are in danger of falling down or being lost forever, and it rescues them. The buildings must be important, either because of their architecture, the way they were built, or because of their place in history, perhaps their age, or what happened there and the building must otherwise be lost without the help of the Landmark Trust. Money is raised, the building's restored and furnished in a style which suits the age of the property, but is also comfortable and safe. And then people can come and stay in the property for a holiday. The money raised pays for the Landmark's future. I'm sure that when people come to stay in the Culloden Tower, they wonder what it would have been like for the Georgians who first lived there. Perhaps they even imagine themselves to be one of them. Life in the 18th century was largely a matter of staying indoors and entertaining yourself. Through reading, writing letters and diaries, perhaps painting and sketching, or playing music, practicing the piano and singing. There was also a lot of needlework if you were a young woman. They looked forward to receiving visitors and to taking tea with them, which was still fairly new at this time. Every fine day they tried to take exercise out of doors, walking in the pleasure gardens, picking fruit and flowers, or maybe walking to Richmond to shop for ribbons. There was also a fine castle walk built in Richmond in Georgian times for them to look out over the views. Bolder people might go riding horses, hunting, fishing, shooting, and even visiting races. There was a very fine race course in Richmond, one of the best in the country. So our months of lockdown have been quite a lot like Georgian times, except probably with far more screen time. 
The upper room has magnificent views over the river and the town. These shutters work like curtains, keeping out the light and the cold. It's now a bedroom, so if you're staying at the tower, you would get ready here to go out to Richmond and many entertainments. There's a theatre, cinema, restaurants to eat out in, and cafes to take tea. Hmm, sounding similar to Georgian times again. The evening entertainments for the Yorks and their guests would have included dances and parties at the assembly rooms in town, and maybe dinner in each other's houses. There was a banqueting room here in the tower. After dinner, the young ladies and gentlemen would have sung and played piano as they'd practised earlier in the day, while the older people listened and talked and played cards. The Georgian Theatre Royal opened in 1788, so I imagine a highlight of their year would be to visit that for plays and entertainments. One time, there was a tightrope walker there who set up his line and walked out from the stage over the audience up to the balcony. It's still running today, it's Britain's oldest working theatre in its original form. So when you walk through the doors, you're seeing the same view as the Yorks would have done. I wonder why it was called Culloden Tower when we were in Yorkshire and Culloden is in Scotland. Well, actually, I called it Cumberland Tower after the Duke of Cumberland. This is him. He commanded King George's troops at the Battle of Culloden in 1745. He defeated the Jacobite rebels, uh, which was last proper attempt to overthrow the British monarch and replace our dear King George, the second bonny Prince Charlie, the Stuart pretender who thought he should be king. This was such a relief to me when the Duke of Cumberland was victorious. If the Jacobites had won, I would have lost my house and my lands and I wouldn't have been a member of parliament anymore. Is there any wonder I wanted to commemorate a triumph to this marvellous tower? Yeah, that makes perfect sense, Mr. York, sir. Hey, where'd he go? Hello, everyone. I work for the Landmark Trust, and we are the charity who look after Culloden Tower. And when we took Culloden Tower on many years ago, it was completely derelict. So all that beautiful plasterwork inside was just a crumbled mess on the floor. Uh, I think there had been fires here, the windows were broken, a lot of the stonework that you see around you had been broken as well. So we raised some money, because that's what we do as a charity, and we sent in some excellent expert craftspeople, so stonemasons and plasterers and painters and decorators, to help fix the place up and to, and to restore all the beautiful decoration that you see downstairs and to make this place livable, inable again. Um, so that means that we have people coming here on their holidays and, uh, and that's how we pay for the upkeep of the place and any ongoing repairs that we have to do. And we're really grateful to all the people who help to restore the place. So either by giving us money or for putting in so much time and effort and care um, and using all their skills and talents to help restore it. So maybe this has inspired you to be a stonemason or a plasterer. I don't know, but it's a brilliant job to have. The Landmark Trust has restored Culloden Tower to its Georgian glory. But what else has changed since then? I'm sure the Yorks would have often have come to the roof to take in the breathtaking views. We've already seen it's a favourite haunt of the two John Yorks. Over there, the river swale runs as it's done for thousands of years. We know that the Yorks enjoyed walks along its banks. There was a bridge there at the time Culloden Tower was built, but that was swept away in a flood in the 1780s, which is when that bridge down there was built. So it was similar, but slightly different. Richmond Town's plan has been almost the same for over 500 years, and the castle dominated the town then as it does now. The castle had already been built for almost 700 years by the time the Culloden Tower was built, so it would probably have been in ruins then too. There were houses across there in Georgian times. Why don't you make a list of all the things these modern houses had that houses 275 years ago wouldn't have had? Remember, no electricity then. Now you remember the younger John York told us he built his menagerie in 1769. So the John York who built the tower would never have seen that house. Richmond has grown a lot over the past century. There would have been fields with no houses except for maybe a scattered farm. So we can see that while there have been significant changes in the landscape over the centuries, such as new houses, 
other things have continued the same. There are similarities here that the Yorks would have recognised, including the castles and the river. John York had such an insight to build this wonderful tower to escape to. I wonder if his ghost is still here. I'm sure it was a favourite place of the family. I'm sure they will be here somewhere. I like them. Funny ghosts. We've had a wonderful day, haven't we, Henry? Thank you very much to the Landmark Trust who allowed us to come into Culloden Tower and to do all of this filming for the local children to have some education during lockdown. I wonder when the tower would have been at its happiest. When it was a Peel Tower with all the horses for friends? Or maybe when it was John York's tower for all the Georgian ladies and gents? Do you think it was sad when it got all ruined? And what about now that's been rescued and recovered by the Landmark Trust? Now everyone around can enjoy it. Hmm, I'm not sure. What do you think, history detectives? Henry, would you like me to show you what I've been working on this week? Oh, yes. I like doing junk modelling. So this has just been taking some boxes that you might find in your own recycling boxes. And I've made them into a tower. And as you can see, this time I've made it into the Culloden Tower. And these really are just coffee boxes and cardboard boxes and toilet rolls that I've covered with some brown paper. You could have a go at that uh, at home. It doesn't have to be the Colossum Tower. You could make any castle you like. They're very easy to do with boxes. Have a go. We'd love to see them on our Facebook page as well if you want to show us what you've been making. I can't wait to see them. <laughs> well, History Detectives, that's all we've got time for today. See you again soon. High five, history detectives.